outside is not that cold And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia Hello everyone and welcome to Country with Celine. I am your host, Celine Tremarkey, and on today's show we have Cody Robinson. Cause being the bigger guy, I put an end to the one night flings pulling out of your drive. So come on and take my hand. There's a damn good chance if we dance, we'll dance all night. You say you're looking for a little more long term, then I might be your type. Ain't no second guessing once you try You'll stop passing by the bigger guy Cody, how are you doing today? I'm good, Celine. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for asking. Okay, so your latest song, Bigger Guy, is out now. How do you feel? Um, I feel great. Uh, like The numbers and the support are I'm blown away with how it's gone so far. Um, it sort of blew up on TikTok like three days before, and the numbers have just kept climbing every day, so that's sweet. Uh, this song was inspired by an old crush of yours, correct? Yeah, it was. Um, I just kept seeing her on the dance floor, and one day I went up and asked her to dance, and she sort of just said, I don't really go home with bigger guys. <laughs> I wasn't even trying to go home with her. I just wanted to dance, but yeah. That's too funny. I, I was watching the video um, that you posted up on your Instagram and it kind of cuts off at the end. Like you don't actually hear her reaction to the song. So what was her reaction to hearing the song? Well, she's super supportive. Um, when, when I sat down with Ben and Devin to write it, I sort of told her that I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. So her reaction, she loves the song. Um, we are good friends. You know, after that, it sort of like, it never led to anything romantically, but we are, we are good friends and she supports it and um, she's super excited. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, if I were her, I would feel honored. Be like, I got a country song written after me. I'm like living on cloud nine right now. <laughs> I was, I was a little worried that that was going to happen with her, but it, it didn't. She's again, she's super cool. We actually FaceTimed yesterday and. She was super proud of the song, so. Yeah, well, of course. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I took a listen to it, and I'm a big fan of that song already. Um, and now I have to ask, what else is in store for you for this year? Yeah, well, uh, good question. I have another song that's ready, um, and it's going to come out in probably, I don't want to speak too soon, but I want to say the next four to six weeks, another song called Long Hard Day, which is super country. So, yeah, it, and it's like, you know, I still work a nine to five job and it, that's what it's about. It's like, a, it's about a Wednesday that's taken forever and, you know, your truck's broke down, your your girlfriend broke up with you and it's it's really good country song. So that's coming out soon. We have another one that's ready as well. It's all about my hometown, which is a really small town, Dorchester, just outside London. And then I'm going to go back out to Calgary and record some more. So... I just hired a um, um, a marketing manager, so she's going to help me get some shows and get some stuff under my belt. So, Well, yeah. that's going to be an exciting year for you. Yeah, and probably more trips down to Nashville to write some more songs. And Good old Nashville. I'm sure everybody wants to get down there again. And it's nice that finally, I would say that the end of last year into this year now, more things have been normal and like we can actually travel now there's not as many restrictions with the quarantining when we come back so that's nice it's the normalcy is like coming back slowly and it feels really good and I know a lot of you artists want to get your butts down to Nashville to record new songs <laughs> yeah it's almost there too here in Ontario it's nice finally we can go out for dinner again as of yesterday or I know if uh, you guys weren't aware, which I'm pretty sure the whole world is aware by now, but Ontario is in lockdowns, out of lockdowns, in lockdowns, out of lockdowns. And now we finally just got out of one um, and everything is lifting. February 21st is when, I don't know, do you like hockey? Yeah, I love hockey. Okay, so let's just talk about this real quickly before we move on um did you see ottawa last night the toronto maple leafs when they played um no toronto maple leafs were playing the devils last night but ottawa there was a game in ottawa and ottawa had fans 
and yeah. they still don't have fans. It's like, what's going on? It's, it's blowing my mind. I'm so mad because I want to get back to a game, and I'm sure you want to get back to a game too. Yeah, I was super curious because the Leafs game, after it ended, it flipped to Ottawa and Edmonton. Yeah. And I saw fans, and I was like, but I did hear the guys talking during the Leafs game saying that, um, like, family and close friends are allowed to attend the games. So maybe they're just not showing them as – they just can't sit as close to the ice as they can in Ottawa. But I did see that. Yeah, I, I hopefully um, we can be back in the buildings again soon because Ottawa is Ontario. And, I mean, if Ottawa can have fans, the Leafs should definitely have fans. So MLSC, open your doors, please. Yeah. Just putting that out there. Um, but anyways, Cody, we'll reel it back a little bit and let's just get to know you a little bit more. So. You were telling me prior to this interview exactly where you're from. Now tell the listeners where you're from. Yeah, so I was born in St. Thomas, Ontario, just outside, like just south of London. And then um, when I was younger, my mom passed away and I moved in with my aunt and uncle in Dorchester. So I grew up in Dorchester, Ontario, real, real small town, a hockey town. So, um, you know, the hockey thing kind of didn't work out. So I went with the singing thing and... <laughs> um yeah it's really now I'm living on the other side of London on a farm then I then I actually went to school in London for a year and it didn't the school thing didn't really work out so I became a I became a camp director actually and that's where my you know ability to perform in front of big crowds really took off like my confidence and that was just a summer camp outside of London and now I'm still working there little farm it's a ski resort and you know horse horses and stuff so that's really fun and now you were just saying that your hockey career didn't take off but your singing career has now when you say hockey career do you mean actually skating or do you mean when you were the announcer for your uh, home team yeah very good question so I guess I kind of joke about it when I was in grade 12 I really hurt my knee really bad and I always said, like, oh, if I didn't hurt my knee, I would have went pro. But obviously, <laughs> obviously, that's a huge lie. Like, I never played any competitive sports. But um, I wanted to be in the sports industry. So I went to school for journalism, sports journalism at Fanshawe. Oh. And, um, you know, I had some sweet opportunities, actually. Like, I could have moved to Toronto one, one year to work, like, do an internship with TSN. And I just couldn't afford it. Toronto was way too expensive because I needed to go right away. Um, but yeah, I would have loved to do that, to do that like sports industry stuff, but it just what didn't, the cards weren't in my favor there. Hey, music is still in the entertainment industry along with sports. So, I mean, you, you never know, like look at Aaron Andrews, Aaron Andrews is the NFL announcer. She's a reporter for an American station down there, but she's also was, but she was the host of dancing with the stars, which is entertainment. Like dancing so I mean you never know the two industries are like very close and they can always crisscross so I mean you can always keep that like route open in case any opportunities do arise from that but your singing career is where your heart really is right yeah honestly I love it and I love being in front of people that's what I'm really good at is entertaining and now, um, what drew you to music um well honestly it just sort of happened you know, being involved in like a the summer camp industry, you know, you're always playing guitar and singing and stuff. And one time a friend was just like, you're really good. And one thing led to another, you know, you have to sit down, have a couple of drinks with some friends and then, oh, Cody's singing, here we go. And then all eyes are on Cody. And then I just really liked it. And yeah, it sort of happened, all fell into place. Now, now I was reading this story about you, which I found so interesting. So you posted a tweet on Twitter adding Brett Kessel if he wanted to play a game of beer pong with you. He then accepted, and then you guys ended up playing together, and then your friends bugged you to sing a song, so you did. And then from that day on, you and Brett kept in, in contact, and then you ended up performing for one of his shows. How surreal was that? That's pretty like how that even happened is just so like what in the world do you know what I mean yeah it was it's it is it was very surreal um 
a lot of things were going through my head when we first started that that day. It was a drive-in show in London, and he was doing two shows, and I was singing in both of them. And it started off. It was like it was a really hot day, and I, we were doing sound check, and Brett was like, "All right, Cody, you're up. Like we're gonna practice your song." And I was like, "Oh God!" So we sat we sat there, we tried it. I I'm serious. We probably did it 15 to 25 times. Like went through it, and not one time did we make it through the entire song. <laughs> no. so I'm I'm sitting here dripping in sweat, like. I was like what are these guys thinking they're probably like Brett why did you do this and then so Brett was just like all right we're done with sound check let's go and we worked on the song once um, backstage and then he said all right we're never doing it again until we're on stage and I was like okay so and everything went perfect it was awesome we never we didn't screw up once um, and it was cool just to be in front of like my home crowd, you know, it was awesome. There was, there was probably like the second show was bigger. I would say probably close to like 10,000 people, which was wow. pretty crazy for my first ever time on a stage. So. Yeah, that's insane. Honestly, Brett Kissel seems like he's such a down to earth kind of guy. He seems so, so, so humbled. And that's a crazy experience for you but I'm sure you're gonna have many more in the future you're still young you still got a career ahead of you yeah he's awesome he's been so supportive and can't yeah. thank him enough no of course and now talking about Brett who would you say are influences um of yours who did you like, grow up listening to or who do you find influences a lot of your songs nowadays yeah well I would say in the older style of country is definitely Johnny Cash is number one. Um, now his songs are kind of hard to, you know, like making songs like that right now are, it's a little hard. So, um, well, I would, you know, Luke Combs is definitely number one for me. Um, he's always, you know, the go-to songs that I put on. Uh, it's funny. I used to try and be Luke Combs. Then I transitioned my voice away from the raspiness. Uh, so Luke Combs, you know, Riley Green, really love those guys. For Canadians, I would I would say definitely Brett, you know, just working with him closely. And Dustin Lynch is amazing as well. So those are guys that, you know, try and, and – and recently Jade Eagleson, you know, we're writing – Ben and I are writing a song right now that we're trying to, you know, really go the route that Jade's going. So fingers crossed. Hopefully he can get in on the song. It would be amazing. Yeah, that would be so, so, so cool. His career is really taking off. He's such a talent as well. And I mean, to be completely honest with you, ever since I started Country with Celine, I like, well, before that, I didn't know how much Canadian talent is in Canada, like especially country music. But when I started this, I'm like talking to so many people and they're introducing me to these people. And then I'm listening to so many different artists. I'm honestly so like blown away. Like even you, like, I'm just like, wow, there's so much talent. And like, the States needs to discover this. Like Nashville and like Warner and like all Sony, all these labels need to realize how much talent we have here because there's so many independent artists. And I mean, nothing's wrong with that, but labels need to start like looking at all these different people and start picking them up and taking them places because the talent is crazy. Yeah, it, it truly is. And you look at Robin, for instance, like mm -hmm. TikTok, you know, you just get on there and overnight it's, yep. you, you, somebody notices you and she's amazing and good for her for doing that. And, you know, we're trying, there's so much talent in Canada. Like I say, you know, there's so many people out there who just, just, just don't happen to know anybody. And, it, and it's unfortunate that they, you know, yeah. can't get into the industry, but keep pushing TikTok. I tell you, that's, that's the number one platform right now for social media. Yep. Number one. And right before this interview, I was just making a TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I have to push content and that's the best way to push it. Especially when you're an artist and you want to try out a new song, you should pop it up on there and see the feedback that you're going to get from listeners. And if they yeah. love it, they love it. If they hate it, you know not to put it out. So it's, you really can learn a lot from TikTok. And it's ever since 2020, I feel like a lot of people have taken TikTok and, and kind of their careers have just like taken off from that, which is so cool. Yeah, I would say like one, like two weeks ago, I probably had 1600 followers on TikTok and I woke up the next morning and I had 16,000. I was like, 
holy, what happened? I, it's crazy. It's honestly yeah. so crazy how it works. Um, and now, Cody, I want to ask you this question. What is it about country music that you love? Well, I just think it has like the power of telling a story. Um, and, you know, it's so relatable. You know, everyone's like, a lot of people are like, oh, country music's just about trucks and girls. But, you know, if you if you go into it, every every story, every song is a story of its own. And that's really what ins inspired me to start writing my own music, you know, because, you know, you have so many different um experiences in life you never think about oh I could write about that I could write about this but once you sit down and and sort of write a story into a song it's amazing what what just a small experience can do yeah and country music is storytelling and it's the mm -hmm. if you're into storytelling country music that genre is the best way to go <laughs> yep exactly Brandon Lancaster he's the lead singer for Lanco and he always says that before he sings greatest love story so well, that song is so good. So I go with. <laughs> that song is so good. Yeah. And Cody, before I let you go, we're going to get a little bit more personal. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and just answer them, okay? All right. So the first one, what's your favorite sports team? Uh, the Leafs. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, what's a hidden talent of yours? Um, that's a tough one to ask. I would say... You definitely have one. I would say hidden talent is that, you know, I, I'm, I don't, that's really tough. Come on. I would, say, think. I would say just getting along with people and, and, you know, you don't expect it. You know, a lot of people think like, you know, I'm kind of shy to start, but um, once it, once we get out there and in front of people, it's crazy how, how I can just blossom. Okay. I'll take that answer. I'll take that answer. Um, what's your favorite season? Winter. Really? Yeah, I really do love winter. Oh, okay. Sure, <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, what's your favorite drink? Um, I had this thing in Panama once. It was called a chocolate monkey, I think. That sounds good. And it was delicious. It was like vanilla, banana, um, blended. It was so good. And now I have like different patios in, in London, Ontario, making these drinks for me. Are you serious? Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, that is so cool. Is there alcohol in it or no alcohol? It's yeah, just, it is. Oh, there's alcohol in it? You yeah. know, that reminds me of Funky Monkey at Booster Juice. You know Funky Monkey? I have never been to Booster Juice, but... I'll have to try it. Okay. When you see a Booster Juice, you're going to order a Funky Monkey. It's with whey protein, banana, and chocolate powder, and I think almond milk. I think that's how they make it. It's so good. It's really All right. good. I'll, you're gonna I'll, like it. I'll try it for sure. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Um, and next one, if you could move anywhere in the world, where would you move? Or... You can say you don't want to move anywhere and you would just stay exactly where you are. I would say probably on either uh, like either parts of Canada, like at the end, BC or the other side, you know, PEI would be sweet where, where, where some friends are from. So that would be awesome. I would like to stay in Canada though. I love Canada. Okay. Good Canadian boy at heart. <laughs> yeah. You, that's literally the West, West coast or the, Complete East Coast. There's no in between there. <laughs> yeah, um, I just feel like I love Ontario. It's just so, you know, everything around Ontario is so, like, BC and the other side, the East Coast are just so beautiful. There's a lot to see in Canada. Honestly, it's such a scenic country. Um, the only thing that sucks about Canada is that, unlike the States, you can go from, like, Florida to Georgia within – a couple hours and you're there. If you want to go from like Ontario to Manitoba or Manitoba to Saskatchewan, it takes like eight, nine, 10 hours to go from like province to province. That's the only thing that sucks. And there, but there's so much to see on the way. So, I mean, you could definitely make a cool road trip out of it. Yeah. We drove to Calgary this summer, which was Ben Chase and I, which was really cool. Um, just to get out of Ontario though, it was half the trip. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm because it it's so big. It, it's just it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Even to go from here to Thunder Bay, I think it's like twelve hours. Like, wow, yeah. that's nuts. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're you're better off driving to Nashville. <laughs> like, and I don't I don't love flying, so driving is just such an an easy choice. But that is flying. That is so fair. Trust me, not a flyer, but I'll fly if I have to. But if I can stay with my feet on the ground, I would gladly do that over my feet, 30,000 feet up in the air. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thanks, Cody, for joining me today on Country with Celine. It was so nice getting to know you. And I'm really excited to hear what's in store this year and all the new songs that you're going to be releasing. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you. No second guessing, once you try, you'll stop passing by. Ain't no second guessing, once you try, you'll stop passing by the bigger guy. Oh, the bigger guy.